the Halifax class multi role patrol frigates have participated in nearly all critical Western naval operations since the early 1990s. They have waved the Canadian flag in essential seas and oceans. These warships will continue their mission until the 2040s when the Canadian surface combatant based on the Type 26 class frigate will replace them. Today, we're investigating the Halifax class, the pride of the Royal Canadian Navy. The Halifax class frigate is Canada's essential element for international participation in multinational naval operations. It is also known as the city class since all are named after a major city in each province plus the cities of Ottawa and Montreal. During the Second World War, the Royal Canadian Navy's primary mission was to keep the sea lines open in the Atlantic and Pacific. And the Canadians were good at it. After the war, the Navy continued focusing on anti-submarine warfare, shortly ASW missions under NATO's First Cold War Doctrine. Thus, the Royal Canadian Navy commissioned 20 Saint Laurent, Restigouche and Annapolis-class escort destroyers between 1955 and 1964. In the early 1970s, Canada built four Iroquois-class destroyers as follow-ons to Saint Laurent-class. However, these ships were much larger and more expensive than intended. So, the Royal Canadian Navy began to search for a more economical vessel to replace its ASW ship fleet and initiated the Canadian Patrol Frigate Program in 1977. Canada evaluated the British Type 24, Italian Maestrale and the US Oliver Hazard Perry class frigates as base models. But later, it decided to continue with an indigenous design. Due to the Royal Canadian Navy's primary mission in NATO doctrines, the new surface combatant would be an ASW frigate with improved air defense capability compared to the previous escort destroyers. After examining two different models, Ottawa chose St. John Shipbuilding's offer in 1982 and ordered six Halifax-class frigates of the first batch in 1983. However, the Royal Canadian Navy changed its long-term strategy and began to demand a general-purpose frigate focusing specifically on ASW capabilities. This change made the redesign works necessary. Also, Ottawa had initially assigned the St. John Shipbuilding as the main contractor for the first six vessels. Then, Marine Industries became a subcontractor for three ships. These two companies experienced some disputes which would not be resolved until 1993. Before solving these problems, Canada ordered additional six frigates of the second batch in 1987. In those years, women began to serve in the Royal Canadian Navy. So, the Navy demanded to extend the Halifax class by 10 meters for the accommodation for the female crew and to increase the aviation capabilities of the ship. However, due to budget restrictions, this demand was refused. All these uncertainties and problems caused delays. The first ship of the class, HMCS Halifax, was laid down on March 19, 1987 and launched on April 30, 1988. The frigate was handed over to the Royal Canadian Navy for sea trials in 1991 in which some design flaws were unveiled. After they were corrected, HMCS Halifax was commissioned on June 29, 1992. Through the Canadian Patrol Frigate Program, this country also developed indigenous tactical command and control systems which would be used on the ship. The hull and superstructure are mainly made of low alloy, high tensile steel with selective use of high yield steels to give additional strength in high stress areas and for ballistic protection. Even though the Halifax class is a large ship, it is designed with a low profile and a reduced radar signature. Its high freeboard, flush deck and broad beam reduce deck wetness. This design of the frigate, with its deep draught and fine lines of the bow, prevents the sonar dome from being lifted clear of the water, reduces slamming and minimizes pitch and roll. This feature also makes helicopter operations easy and increases general crew comfort and efficiency. The propellers maximize the speed at which cavitation occurs. 
Gas turbines, diesel and gearboxes are RAF mounted. Also, they are housed in acoustic enclosures where necessary. The hull openings under the waterline are kept to a minimum and designed to reduce turbulence and resonance. All 12 frigates were initially fitted with the Prairie Masker system, which released air bubbles from the hull around noise-generating regions of the ship. But later, these systems were deactivated when the Royal Canadian Navy determined that their operating costs outweighed their benefits. The Halifax class also has special measures to minimize heat signature. As the hangar is, the flight deck is 23 meters long and 16 meters wide. They can accommodate a 10-ton class helicopter. The Royal Canadian Navy initially deployed the CH-124 Sea Kings on the Halifax class frigates. Now it uses the CH-148 Cyclone. The flight deck is fitted with a bear trap system allowing the launch and recovery of helicopters up to Sea State 6. All 12 Halifax class frigates were modernized between 2010 and 2016 to expand their service lives to the 2030s. We will mention the changes system by system later. The complement of the Halifax class is 225 person. Its standard displacement was 4,300 tons, while its fully loaded displacement was 4,770 tons. The ship has a length of 134.2 meters, a beam of 16.4 meters, and a drought of 5 meters. The combined diesel and gas propulsion system consists of two 23,747 horsepower GELM 2500 gas turbines and one 8,800 horsepower SEMT Pilstick 20PA6 V280 MPC diesel engine. Its top speed is 30 knots. The ship can reach a range of 17,600 kilometers, in other words, 9,500 nautical miles. During the modernization, the shin pads combat management system of the Halifax class was replaced by the CMS-330 which includes elements of the Saab 9LV Mark IV. So, the frigates have gained the Link 16 and Link 22 capabilities. Also, the IPMS of L3 maps replaced the shin max integrated platform management system. During the modernization, the GH band Sea Draft SG 150HC air and surface search radar was updated. Also, the CD band ANSPS 49 2D long range surveillance radar of the Halifax class was replaced with the Smart S Mark II. This S band 3D radar can detect air and surface targets from 250 and 80 kilometers, respectively. The X and S band Pathfinder SD Mark II navigation radar replace the I-Band Type 1007. Besides, the Halifax class has received the Sirius Long Range Infrared Search and Track System, which can track aircraft and ships with low radar cross-section. The frigate's previous VM25 steers were replaced by the Ceros 200 radar and optronic tracking systems, which interface with advanced anti-ship missiles and gun systems. It provides defense against modern threats including modern sea-skimming anti-ship missiles or asymmetric threats in littorals. These ships now has the mass countermeasure system and the Albit systems made electronic warfare equipment including active jamming and tracking systems. The mass can protect the vessel from anti-ship missile attacks by launching decoys which operate in all relevant wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum such as ultraviolet, electro-optical, laser, infrared, and radar. The ship's SQS-510 and SQR-501 Kenta sonars and AN-SLQ-25 anti-torpedo decoys remained unchanged. During the modernization, the Halifax-class ship's previous Harpoon Block 1 anti-ship missiles changed to the Block 2 variant with a better literal water attack capability. The Harpoon with a 221.6 kg semi-armor piercing warhead has a range of 124 km. The Halifax class now uses the RIM-162 ESSM air defense missile instead of the previous RIM-7 Sea Sparrow. The ESSM has a range of 50 km and a maximum speed of Mach 4. During the modernization, 
the frigate's 57mm SAK Mark II gun was updated to Mark III standards. So, it can fire the 3P all-target programmable ammunition. The SAK Mark III also has a small muzzle velocity radar and a camera. Thus, the gun can also be operated and fired manually without the fire control system using a joystick. It has a rate of fire of 220 rounds per minute and a maximum effective range of 17,000 meters. The Mark 15 Phalanx Close-In Weapon System was also upgraded to the Block 1B Baseline 1 configuration, which is an additional forward-looking infrared sensor, automatic acquisition video tracker, optimized gun barrels, and enhanced lethality cartridges. Thanks to these new systems, the Phalanx is now more effective against small maneuvering surface craft, slow-flying fixed and rotary winged aircraft, and unmanned aerial vehicles. Also, the forward-looking infrared sensor, optimized gun barrels and enhanced lethality cartridges improve performance against anti-ship cruise missiles. The Halifax class has two fixed twin 324mm Mark 32 Mod 9 torpedo tubes sighted aft at the forward end of the hangar. There is one pair on the either beam. They can launch the Mark 46 Mod 5 torpedo, which has a range of 9.25km and a speed of 45 knots. The Halifax class has a busy career. HMCS Halifax, HMCS Ville de Quebec, HMCS Toronto, HMCS Calgary, HMCS Montreal, and HMCS Fredericton participated in Operation Sharp Guard, the naval blockade of Yugoslavia in the Adriatic Sea. Immediately after the 9-11 attack, HMCS Halifax and HMCS Vancouver joined the US task force in the Indian Ocean. Then eight frigates served in the Arabian Sea as a part of the war in Afghanistan. Since the first day of their service, the Halifax-class ships have participated in many operations in the Persian and Aden Gulf. They conducted many anti-piracy, counter-narcotic and naval blockade missions in the region. In 2003, HMCS Calgary conducted 24 boardings of suspect vessels. In 2008, HMCS Charlottetown made significant narcotics interceptions by catching a Dow carrying four tons of hashish. In 2009, HMCS Winnipeg saved the Norwegian tanker MV Front Arden from the Somalian pirates. In 2019, HMCS Regina performed four successful narcotic interceptions in the region. HMCS Vancouver, HMCS Fredericton and HMCS Charlottetown participated in the NATO-led Operation Unified Protector during the 2011 Libyan Civil War. HMCS Charlottetown, which patrolled the waters off of North Libya, engaged several small boats involved in an attack on the port of city of Misrate. Later, she came under fire from a dozen BM-21 rockets in the region, but no damage or injuries were reported. These frigates also participated in Operation Carib and performed drug smuggling interdiction duties in the Caribbean. They crossed the Taiwan Strait several times in a freedom of navigation demonstration. During the transit in 2019, two Chinese Su-30s harassed HMCS Regina. They flew at a height of 30 meters within 300 meters of the frigate. In 2023, the Chinese destroyer Suju cut across the bow of USS Chanhoun. The closest point of approach was 140 meters. When the incident happened, HMCS Montreal was accompanying the US destroyer. HMCS Halifax, HMCS Ville de Quebec, HMCS Charlottetown and HMCS St. John's patrolled the Baltic Sea. HMCS Ville de Quebec, HMCS Toronto, HMCS Fredericton and HMCS St. John's waved the Canadian flag in the Black Sea. On September 8, 2014, HMCS Toronto was provocatively circled by two Russian Su-24s. We should mention that in 2019, HMCS Regina received a new dazzle camouflage in 1944 colors to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Battle of the Atlantic. The Halifax class has a special place in Canadian naval history. So, in 2010, on the occasion of the centenary of the Royal Canadian Navy, 
the Canadian Royal Mint printed the relief of HMCS Halifax on the Canadian dollar. In 2008, Canada initiated the Canadian Surface Combatant Program to replace the Halifax-class frigates. After careful assessment, the British Type 26 class was selected as the preferred design on October 19, 2018. It is planned to begin the construction of the first ship in the mid or late 2020s. By commissioning the new frigates, the retirement days of the Halifax-class surface combatants will begin. Still, they will continue their precious service until the 2040s. The Halifax-class frigates have served in almost all the hot seas. They have successfully demonstrated Canada's overseas operation capability countless times. These beautiful surface combatants are the true legends of the Royal Canadian Navy. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.